Uh, for me, just out of curiosity, why do you keep robotics? Uh, why? This is a good question, why? Um, actually, I was very interested, for example, how human learned. Because when I was working on, um, like, let's say, like seven years ago, when I was doing my uh, master, then I uh, was studying machine learning, signal processing, something like that. But when it came, for example, with the AI, I was thinking, okay, what well, do you think as a human, really, we are learning the environments, you know, as we are uh, learning at university means collecting so many data, you know, and then using deep learning with thousand samples or not. Then I came um, uh, with the idea how we can, we can study human, how we can do the, the human study. And uh, then in order, for example, to, how can I say, to implement this study, I had to go to humanoid, means from human to human. So the idea of humanoid was to build up a robot, uh, build up a, a research platform in order to, for example, implement or test um, the methodology we are um, developing in AI. When we talk about the platform, the platform can be anything. Even, um, let's say, the autonomous car can be a platform. But for me, since I was doing the, a human study, uh, the research platform was a human. And human is a robot. So, the, this one was the reason, even I tried to build up a baby robot, which is a nine-month-old robot and is the, the first baby robot in the world in order just to prove some uh, AI concept. This one was the reason. We came to the robotics and What's mainly the thing you tried to test with a baby robot? Again, a very good question. Because um, if we, we are, because there are, when we are talking about AR and machine learning, many people, they are just thinking about the data, data mining. For me, they are the data mining. It means just taking some data, some sample, train some algorithm, you know, like a classifiers or some, I don't know, like uh, using some method like reinforcement learning, unsupervised learning. What? But actually, this is not a real learning. Because when we are talking about the learning, for me, the learning should be the perception. Because we, we, we perceive the situation, environment. Then we try to interpret. We are interacting in order to adapt or how can I say, uh, modify the perception. Then we use that one in order to learn. If we don't learn enough, again, we back to our perception. It means perception, action and learning. For me, this is an AI, you know. This will be just, we can just implement this one or uh, let's say to go through this loop while we are using the, is the robots as an agent. Otherwise, we can, just, for example, use a, a PC, you know, and ask the PC to do some action or to do some perception or then learn something. Which is, uh, uh, at the moment, I think this is missing in an um, AI community. Because people are just concentrated on the learning part. They, they are not taking care of the uh, interaction, action, and the perception, which are very important for any, any um, like, autonomous system or cognitive systems which we are going to develop. As this can be even, um, at the moment, uh, people are working can be an autonomous car as a cognitive uh, agent. Uh, I believe that we have to really follow this rules. And the best uh, platform to test, to validate, and to be sure, for example, we are working or not, is the robotics system. What's at the core of your research currently? At the moment, which I'm doing um, is the tactile-based perception and learning. Because I want to know that how we can learn from our sense of touch. And there are more challenging compared to the vision. Because actually this is, um, I will give, give an example. We, we saw many people in our society, they are blind, they don't have the vision. But we will not find, uh, honestly, we have just two two people in the world, they don't have a sense of touch. Not completely partial. Without sense of touch, we cannot stand here. We don't know, this is my hand, where is my hand, you know? So this is missing. This is missing in um, the any, like, agents, any robotic systems, right? And we learn even first when we, we are uh, kind of, as a, we are in the uterus, as a fetus, we are using our sense of touch. 
then we come when we are coming out even as a, as a, a human baby we cannot see in, uh, very good you know we are uh, using our sense of touch to explore the environment you know grabbing an object putting the baby put it the object in the hand because the highest the fingertip and uh, the lips has the highest special resolution in order then they are uh, the baby use this uh, I mean the part of the body in order to uh, to learn about the the human, uh, uh, the objects, environment, and even interact with the parents or, for example, uh, the others. And the other thing uh, which I like to really work on, the reason I would like to uh, uh, learn on this, um, the sense of touch, uh, there are more challenging than um, the vision. For example, we know that uh, there are some fancy, nice uh, uh, machine learning method which is called deep learning, right? We are using the cameras, collecting thousands of thousand data, and then we do the classification. But when it comes to the touch, it's impossible. Because when you are uh, touching the object, if the object is rough, or for example, it's a broken object, you know, after one, two times touching or collecting data, you start bleeding. It's because the body or the, the uh, let's say, the, our skin, is in contact with the objects. So this is one uh, issues and problem in the sense of that the other thing is um, we have five million type of sensors, but two cameras. When it comes to the um, information processing, transmitting the information, we have to be more um, intelligent. You know, we have to know how much, how to, to uh, process the data and how much uh, data to to transfer because maybe some of the data are irrelevant and at the moment for example with the robotic system which we have we are not able to for example use thousand of thousand GPU in order to process of the data because we want to have a I mean the small robot even as assistant robot at home in a hospital to help the for example the patient to have 24 hours seven day nurse as a robot you know to hold the patient grab the patient from the bed to put it in a uh, wheelchair. So, a small, tiny robot is more interesting. Otherwise, if you want to, for example, use, uh, come with a many fancy algorithm, you know, is impossible. So, what I was trying to do, I was trying to tackle these two main problems in a robotic system and in an AI field, which is kind of, is a sense of touch, but is untouched by the researcher. Just just when I, uh, when I think about what you explained with, with um, uh, the sense of touch, so it's with objects which are fixed. I think it's not so not so difficult, maybe not so difficult. Uh, but uh, as you explained, mm -hmm. if you have a human body in front of you and a, and a robot would touch a human body, you need to be more careful not to hurt. How do you make uh, make a robot learn not to hurt him? Actually, the reason is uh, we why we have a sense of touch because we want the robot to be safe when it comes to the human human robot interaction, right? Means, for example, when we had a kind of a multi a model sensory, you know, when the robot comes to even let's say the robot doesn't know if it's human or any object, tries to avoid colliding the objects, not only to uh, avoid hurting the objects, but also tries to keep uh, itself safe, you know. If the robot, for example, I don't know, kicks the arm to the, even to the wall, you know, afterwards we get a problem and we don't want to buy the new ones, right? So uh, the robot, we are trying to enable, to get the sense of touch, to feel, to sense if there is an object or not mm -hmm. and tries to avoid the objects not again only the object even its arm you know when we do the dual arm manipulation you know if you close but you know as a human we cannot collide you know the robot should be like that when it comes you know and they say okay this is a, this is another object mm -hmm. then we had we have another thing uh, another uh, topics which we call it the body perception means when the robot is trying to work with one hand 
you know, when it comes to the other, how the robot knows this is another. You know, you know, we use our both hands in order to um, execute a task or complete a task. You know, and then we are trying. Uh, then we use it as a kind of a collaborative tools. Without sense of touch is impossible. Without sense of touch, we don't know where our where is the hand. You know, where are our hand is. You know, this is the only thing. Uh, at the moment is missing in the robotic systems and one of the one uh, interesting example is if you ask some people can you be a, uh, the robot for me and they try to have a, such a this movement why we have such a this movement not a smooth movement because the robot doesn't have a sense of touch the smooth movement comes with a sense of touch an example put the hand in the uh, ice cube, you know, inside of the bottle, full of ice cube, and later on if you take it out, you don't know this is your hand because you cannot feel it, mm -hmm. you know. This is the, uh, uh, the role of sense of touch in a human, and not even in human, in our, uh, pre I mean, the old creatures in the world. Mm -hmm. So currently you're looking at one, uh, one perception system, uh, isolated, looking at touch, feeling, uh, since um, we have some visual and we as a, as a person we look at things visually and touch it of course so it's a combined experience exactly. at what point uh, do you think you will actually get all the data to care of so like what kind of uh, things you can hear what kind of things you can see and the tactile experience this is this is this is completely right because as a as a human we are using uh, different um, sensory modalities at the moment when i'm talking i'm talk, i'm working on a tactile it doesn't mean i'm just working on a tactile and i'm ignoring the other I'm trying because we have to develop the hardware because we have a standard camera but we don't have any uh, tactile sensors, you know. We have different technology but there is no standard tactile sensor which we can, everyone can use it, right? Uh, this is the problem. We, we, at the moment I'm trying to develop the hardware as well as the, uh, the learning method, I mean the signal processing method. And, uh, when we, at the moment, we have some, uh, for example, some achievement, we have some result. And when it comes, for example, to, uh, to the, the, the real, I mean, the situation and uh, working with the robot, we have sensory fusion because we are fusing the vision and also the tactile sensor and auditory. An example can be, for example, if you want to grasp an object from the table, we have so many objects on the table, right? If you want to touch in order to find one uh, means to know how many objects are on the table is very time consuming. So what is the best? Just looking and recognizing the objects. Mm -hmm. And if you want to detect, uh, to grasp the soft, same object like a bottle of water, one is soft, one is um, uh, hard, with the vision is impossible. You have to reach, you have to grasp, right? Mm -hmm. Means always we are doing the sense, we are using the sensory modality, but human, um, uh, select means we have uh, sensory selection which information which sensor sensory perception we have to select at a certain time you know if it's dark so vision doesn't work the touch means for example we call it a tactile slam you are touching in order to find the, the way you know but if for example is a light so you know that okay this is elevator you will just go to the elevator Mm -hmm. So we have this one, we, have, we call it uh, sensory information. At the moment mm -hmm. we are also using, beside that we are trying to develop um, the tactile sensors, artificial skin or robotic skin, plus the method which can interpret the information and the learning method which can use this information in order to learn, means learning means to bring the ability to the robots, you know, to uh, get certain skill in order to interact safely with the environment. Thank you very much, Moses, for the interview. You're it was welcome. beautiful to listen to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Guys, we would like to thank all the sponsors and participants and the speakers for attending MI Summit, the one and only free event in Munich regarding artificial intelligence. It will become even bigger for the next years because we believe that the science should be heaped free.